Hey folks, Bill Allred here. Thank you very much for joining my podcast, and I hope you'll join me again as I continue my stories about music and my travels. You know, you've heard my previous podcast about my very eventful trip back from the Navy to Rock Island. But, uh, you know, going into the Navy uh, is an interesting thing as well. I graduated from high school in 1954. I went into the Navy in 1954, along with about a dozen other guys from Rock Island and the surrounding community. So we were all excited, and uh, we went down to the uh, Rock Island train station. You know, the rocket, of course, the Rock Island rocket was uh, kind kind of fading away. And they had a car left that if someone was running for president, they would stand on the rear of this car if they were giving a speech or something. It was a real uh, uh, ancient car. So uh, anyway, we were all standing out in the car there waving our hands like it was such a special thing. And it was a special thing. And uh, the train pulled out, and there I was on my way to Great Lakes Naval Training Center for boot camp. Now, this was kind of a, 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 so typical of going into the service. Somebody says, now, I'll tell you what, I'll give you some advice here. Uh, don't play in the boot camp band because your commander of your unit will think that you're doing that to get out of the drills and all the other things that you do. And it could get you in a little trouble. Uh, okay. Um, you know, I reluctantly said, okay, I was kind of, hoping to play in the band, but I don't want it to mess up my career from from the start. So um, we started our boot camp, you know, which was, uh, all of it was new to me, but a uh, little tough at spots, but uh, I was enjoying it. I had decided to, to, to have a good time in the service. So anyway, uh, our my CEO, or <laughs> CO, called me into his office one day, and he said, uh, hey, all red. He said, I understand you're quite a trombone player. And I said, yeah, I, I played it quite a, quite a while. And uh, he said, how come you're not in the boot camp band? I said, well, I, I, I was kind of warned against it from various people about missing some, you know, important training time. He said, that's not true. He said, I would feel good if you were in the boot camp band, somebody from our unit. I said, well, I'll do that. So I joined the boot camp band, which was an incredible band and just had a great time marching in the parades and playing all this good music and uh, a, a good way to start my professional career, I guess. So uh, anyway, boot camp went great. Uh, we all had a, quite a celebration when we finished boot camp and got our final papers and everything. I know we went downtown Chicago one day, down to Maxwell Street, and the guys with me were getting tattoos, you know, mom and anchors and stuff like that. I don't know. I I just kind of shied away from it. And uh, they just kept at me and kept at me, and I figured, okay, 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 I'll get a tattoo. So I, I went to this guy, and this is the truth. The guy's name was Tats Thomas, and Tats... Uh, so, well, what do you want, Sailor? I said, I just want one musical note. He said, well, uh, he said, draw it for me. So he gave me this piece of paper, and I drew the musical note, and he flipped it over. It was his pattern. So flipped it over, and he's just about done with it. And I said, whoa, 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 wait. It's, it's backwards. <laughs> he said, too late, man. And so I've had a backwards note uh, for 100 years or at least. And I've always wanted to get it fixed, but I never have. But uh, anyway, it was a good investment. It cost me $3 to get a three-quarter inch high note in 1955. I thought that was something. Anyway, we uh, went back to the base. Uh, you know, we'd had a few drinks. Nothing nothing was going to get us in trouble. So uh, it was about another two weeks before we actually went to our respective stations. Now, they had an outgoing unit there, which took sailors from boot camp and put them on various, you know, wherever they needed players. Well, 
I was offered the chance to go to the Naval School of Music, but I had to extend a year and a half to go to the Naval School, which you talk about being torn. But I decided not to go to the Navy School and to just take my chances, you know, because I went in when I was 17, and they called that a kitty cruise, which meant that you would be out of the Navy before you were 21. So it's a, it's a short enlistment. So um, I can I was assigned to an aircraft carrier at the naval base in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Now you gotta you gotta keep this in mind. I went from Rock Island, Illinois, who I think they just had pizza for six months, to Philadelphia, which was gee wh what a place that was. Oh my heavens! So I reported on duty and. Uh, you're, you are just a general miscellaneous sailor when you do that, you know. Found out which gun mount I was on when we did had our, our battle drills and stuff like that. So uh, I was on the ship probably two weeks, and I get a call from the executive officer. of That's the number two guy from down from the captain. And I didn't know if I'd screwed up or something. I, I was kind of scared. So I went up to his cabin. And uh, he said, uh, you're all red, right? And I said, well, yes, that's, that's me. He said, I understand you're a trombone player and a jazz trombone player at that. I said, yeah, I've been working on that. He said, well, let me explain. He said, I want a band on this ship, an aircraft carrier. It's a small carrier, but we just need a band. We need to do some USO stuff. And he said, uh, so I'll change your rate, you know, to musician he said, uh, I introduced you to a guy named Milt Krupp, who was the band director. Uh, that he had, he, In other words, he created a band for his aircraft carrier. Wow, what a situation that was. So I, I went uh, to the first rehearsal, and uh, he'd done a good job. The band was incredible. And Krupp was kind of a smart guy. He came, hey, man, he said, so you're the hot shot from Illinois. <laughs> And I said, well, I, if you think so, I'll do my best to fulfill that requirement. And uh, the band was great. Oh, my God. You know, five saxes, four trombones, four trumpets. And he got the guys. He told the Naval Department, I want musicians. I want them on this ship. And so I was uh, about a year and a half at sea with us. And we did USO shows, Patty Page, Mel Terme, people like that. And it was great. Uh, uh, you know, the only thing I had to do, and everybody did uh, during what they call general quarters, is a, is a, a, a battle alert. Uh, I had a I had to be on this uh, forty millimeter ACAC gun, you know, where the barrels go in and out. And uh, the, the loudest thing I'd ever heard was my grandpa's uh, shotgun, you know. So that was quite an experience, but I had a great time in the band and uh, just, you know, we went to Barcelona, Spain and all over in uh, England. I had one embarrassing thing happen to me there. Uh, we pulled into Portsmouth, England, which is where all the ships come in. And, and the, the nice thing about Portsmouth is that you can tie up instead of going at anchor, which you have to take one of the ship's small boats in and out. So anyway, uh, we pulled in on the 4th of July and one of the guys said, uh, you going over on the beach? That, that was a Navy term for just going over in, in, in wherever the, there was land. And I said, nah, I don't think I'll go over. You know, I said, it's a fourth and there'll be nothing open. And the guy said, boy, he said, you're really from Illinois, aren't you? I said, what are you talking about? He said, it's England. They don't close on the 4th of July. <laughs> And uh, I, I, it was a tough time getting over that one, but but I did. But the experiences on the ship were great. The band was killer and a, a great way to start your career in the service. Well, one day on the ship, there was an article on the bulletin board. Everybody always checked the bulletin board about uh, shore duty opportunities. Didn't say what they were. And uh, I'd wanted to, you know, I'd been on the ship almost two years, you know, it was great. We've been to very romantic places and the band was great, but you know, I guess it was the youth in me just wanting to, to check out newer things. So I put in for it and I got it. So 
I, I went, uh, it was like maybe a month later, we went to uh, another outgoing unit. <laughs> it was my specialty. Anyway, uh, and I found myself flying uh, in a plane to, to uh, Argentia, Newfoundland, big Navy base in Canada. And uh, it, it was it was really pretty because I went there in the summer. I didn't I hadn't braved a winter yet. It was pretty cold in the winter time. But when I got there, uh, the guy said, "No," he said, "We we uh, have information here that you're a musician." He says, "There's no billets or no jobs open right now in the band." He says, "There's a couple guys that are going to be leaving, but you will have to." Uh, we'll just have to put you on general duty until they leave. It's, he said, it, you know, nothing unreasonable. He said, there, it's probably going to be about a month and a half, you know. So he put me on general duty, which it was unloading ships. I was a cargo handler, you know. But uh, I, in the horizon was the Navy band, and eventually uh, a couple guys left. One of them was a trombone player, and I got in the band, and... And that, I thought the band on the ship was good, but that band uh, was really incredible. I played in, in, the, in the naval band during the day, and then uh, at night I formed a little, just a little quartet and got to work around some of the, the private clubs. See, there were, in Argentia, Newfoundland, every branch of service was present, Army, Navy, Marines, everybody. And so they all had their own night, little nightclub, little night spots, you know. And so there was a work there, a lot of work. I, I saved enough money to buy me an Oldsmobile convertible later. So uh, that that was a good thing. Uh, I enjoyed that and met a lot of neat people. Uh, I met some guys I still write letters to, you know. And we're all eighty some years old. But um, Newfoundland was great. The only uh, problem up there was. There had been some bad acting sailors, and so the the Mounties, the Mounted Police, uh, had little use for anybody from the U.S. that was overacting. You know, they they clamped down like you wouldn't you wouldn't believe. So uh, anyway, uh, it w it was generally a good thing. I bought this old car, uh, old Ford, uh, for sixty dollars. <laughs> And I bought it together with a guy, uh, a fellow band guy, the bass player. And uh, we drove that for a while. Ended up, But we were in St. John's, Newfoundland one day, and we were taking off at this corner, and this lady was trying to cross the street, and she screamed. We didn't touch her. She screamed. Anyway, the Mounties came over, and, of course, they had no, uh, they didn't really care for us. And as, as it turned out, we had to sell the car. I think we sold the car for $100 and had to pay a $75 fine to the Mounties, you know. And uh, that, was, that was my only run-in with the Mounted Police. They were good and, and professional, but uh, some guys in previous years had been really nasty, and we were paying for it. But Argentia, Newfoundland was great. I went from their home. And um, I had a great naval career because here, here's what I did. When we, were, when we started our boot camp in Great Lakes, our CO said, all right. He said, welcome aboard. You're in the Navy. He said, now, if you want to be miserable and just can't stand it, he says, this is a good place to be. But if you want to be happy and take, take care of yourself and make use of any new situation— and have a good time, generally, he said. This is also the good place, so it's up to you. I had a great time. And I hope you've had a great time listening to my podcast. Let's uh, continue the music uh, as we listen to the classic jazz band's recording of Wabash Blues. 